All right, Anthony, I'm sure that game was a, a little tighter than you may have wanted. Uh, just uh, heading in, all things considered, you played the entire second half. How did you feel, first of all, after the, the, the last couple of games and the last couple of days? And your, your play, I guess, suggested that you felt fine. But, but how, how do you, can you take us through those last couple of days and then playing the whole second half tonight? Uh, I felt fine. Uh, no issues with <clears throat> anything. Um, felt pretty good out there. And when you do have to play, and this has happened before, right? You certainly playoff games last year. Is there anything that shifts for you in terms of how to be effective late and to keep the legs with all that you have to do in a, a game like this? No, just win. Um, you know, they got some talented young guys <clears throat> over there who can score the basketball. Uh, you know, we just got to win. It's the time of the year where you, <clears throat> where you just got to win. Um, when is keep moving forward. Uh, can't sit sit back and try to uh, dissect. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, you get a day to kind of look at film and see what you get better at. But uh, it's not early in the regular season. Um, you know, I've seen the playoffs. Um, <coughs> you know, you try to get as many wins as possible, whether they're you know, clean wins, ugly wins. Um, and we're kind of in that in that mode right now. Obviously, there's a lot of things that we want to do better. Uh, our turnovers and um, you know, defense and rebounding. But I think uh, you know we address it and then we just kind of move forward. Um, and get ready for New Orleans. We'll know more after tonight, like New Orleans, uh, their game, right, with Golden State, and then Sacramento and Phoenix. But bottom line is, like, you guys probably give yourselves a, a better road if you win that game. You're going to try to win it anyway. But how, how much does that just sense of, you know, potentially giving yourself a slightly easier path in the play and impact your performance on Sunday? Uh, we just got to do our job. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the other teams uh, in the other games and uh, what they're thinking or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, we control what we control, and that's one of the basketball game on Sunday and see what happens from there. Defensively, AD, um, you guys were able to get enough stops. You were able to get, kind of find the intensity level that you guys seem like you were looking for for stretches. But as the stakes get higher, how important is it for you guys to get to that place faster um, on that side of the ball in terms of disrupting? And do, do, do you think that, I don't want to say you guys have been holding that back, but I know you picked your spots. Is it is it time to kind of go all out on that front? Yeah, I mean, in order to win games in the playoffs, you have to defend. Um, so we do got to pick it up, especially defensive rebounding. Um, you know, teams have been crashing their glass lately, just trying to get second chance opportunities. Um, and so we got to do a better job on that on that end. But you know. <clears throat> It's that time. You know, it's that time where you got to lock in defensively. Um, you know, the miscommunication and the, the mishaps uh, got to be very limited. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to win, you know, so uh, we have enough in this room to do so uh, on the defensive end. But uh, it's time, especially going to New Orleans. You know, I said their team has been playing well, uh, even without BI. Um, you know, big win in sack yesterday, so uh, you know, they, all, they got a lot of firepower. Um, and we got to lock in defensively in order to, to get that win. It's five years into your career with the Lakers at the first <coughs> chunk with New Orleans, and obviously you guys played them in a, a bigger stake type of game in Vegas, but you're going to New Orleans for like a quasi-playoff game on Sunday. Does that bring up anything, start up anything in you in terms of your kind of basketball journey? No, I think after I got traded uh, five seasons ago, um, those were the times where it was, you know, something. But now it's, it doesn't mean anything to me now. Um, it's five years ago. Uh, except obviously I spent a lot of my career, uh, seven years there, so. But. <clears throat> I don't really, you know, like, hey guys, it's New Orleans, we gotta, you know, uh, I said in the sense of that they're a good team and we gotta, you know, win the games, but um, as far as like personal vendetta or like anything like that, I don't know, I don't know if they do, but I, I don't. Last two. What was the key for that matchup against the Pelicans, in your opinion, <laughs> kind of like the first thing that comes to mind? Um, you know, obviously CJ. Uh, you know, Zion on the hairs of the snake. I'm not sure if, you know, B.I. status, but if he is back, you know, obviously him as well. 
Um, <clears throat> and then our other guys, I mean, you know, Trey Murphy shot the ball well last night. Uh, Alvarado, what he's able to do. Um, you know, uh, Irv with his defense. So, uh, they got a lot of weapons uh, on both ends of the floor, and we have to be able to um, play the right way. We can't play how we play tonight, you know, the turnovers and, you know, the, the um, you know, letting them get offensive rebounds and uh, sloppy play. So, uh, they'll take advantage of it. Um, so we have to be able to uh, lock in and kind of play how we play, uh, play them um, in the end season tournament, uh, and even a little bit how we played them at home uh, a couple of while ago. <clears throat> Last question. Thanks, Anthony. Well, we've seen games like this before where the other team is missing its quote unquote name players and the other team comes out you know with, with a strong effort do you think that caught you guys off guard that dynamic at all and and what do you think was the difference maker no didn't catch us off guard because we already knew who was not playing for them um, but at the end of the day they're NBA players and we got to approach it that way so you know the game you can't dictate the game before the game starts and say okay this is what we got to do like you just play the game and however the game shape itself out you try to figure out how to get win uh, get a dub which we did you had that uh, 6 0 towards the end to, to close things out, in, but it was in minute 41. Um, how could that type of workload affect you for Sunday and, and beyond? I'll be ready for Sunday. You, you guys were able to find the, the switch defensively um, in the fourth. Um, Get the stops you need, but as the stakes get higher, the games get tougher. What's your confidence level that you guys can be able to play that at that level defensively? More consistently? Uh, the game will dictate, dictate itself. We just go out and try to execute the game plan, and you know, you know, let the chips fall where they may. There was a moment in the third quarter where you really picked things up defensively, um, kind of you know picking up the guys, forced a couple of near shot clock violations. When when you need to go into that mode and it's still that early, uh, what's what's the mindset there and what's the kind of the way to try to get the teammates to follow there? That's all. Just trying to ignite the teammates, understanding what the what the moment at hand is. Um, you know, coming to the game, we all knew it was a three-way tie between us going state and, and sack and. You know, um, a lot of implications going on. Obviously, those games will be played out how they played out, and that, that'll take care of itself. But we need to take care of us. And uh, I feel like we wasn't playing with enough sense of urgency. So I just tried to see if I could step it up defensively, get them to change, you know, their tempo, and see if my guys will follow. Given the run you all made last year coming out of the play-in game, does the seeding really matter at this point? Yeah, of course it matters. Uh, every game matters. Every seed matters. But um, you, whatever, however you fall, wherever you fall, you can't play in the past. But absolutely, I mean, I, won't, I, won't, I can't sit here and say um, I'd much rather be where we are today than at one seed. Uh, that would be a lie. So, of course, seeds matter. Um, but wherever you fall, that's you, you, you take that challenge. Well, what's the top line item for New Orleans on Sunday? Uh, win. What? Uh, I guess like, no, 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 like the matchup. Win. Okay. Um, D'Lo's been in a little slump yeah. here this last week. Um, is he a guy that, that needs any encouragement to, to maintain his aggressiveness? Do you feel like he was as aggressive as he needed to be tonight? D'Lo is, when D'Lo plays well, we all play well. When D'Lo's aggressive, we all, you know, we, we, we feel pretty good about that. So, they find a shot. We don't worry about that. Uh, Gabe was a plus 27 off the bench. Look, at plus minus one game sometimes doesn't tell you anything. But defensively, like where where have you seen him progress? As he's not had that many games, but you know, it seems like he has some skill sets that can help you. Gabe's a winner. It's that simple. And uh, as he continues to get his legs up underneath him, hopefully he has enough time. Hopefully we continue to give him enough time to get his legs up underneath him. Um, but he's a winner. That's why we that's why we brought him on. You closed Last question. out with a double pump reverse on the break while sharing the court with a guy who's literally 20 years younger than you, 19 years, the youngest kid in the NBA, and you had a big smile. I mean, obviously it helped you close out the game, but mm -hmm. what's the satisfaction level to continue to perform at a level that if someone was watching you for the first time, they wouldn't know that you were the 39-year-old and the other guy was uh, About a grades in my beard, they probably know. <laughs> they probably know I was a lot older than, uh, than, they, than they think, but... Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be able to get on, the, be able to be on the floor and be able to, you know, and, and play at a high level and keep up with the young guys and keep up with the youngest guy. 
and something I take pride in. It's, a, it's an honor to be able to play this game that I love to play and play it at a high level and, and you know, be able to share the court with my teammates, be able to share the court with, with rookies that's probably watched me throughout my whole career. And if not, they watched me at you know bits and pieces throughout my career. And I hope that I was able to inspire them along my, my, my journey. So, um, you know, and if not, then hopefully I can inspire them why we play against each other or, or we'll show them something, whatever. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just pretty cool. It's just an honor to just be able to play this game. This game is uh, giving so, so much to me, obviously, and I just try to give everything back to it and the people that come watch me play. LeBron, I know you, that you was said. The last one. Thanks, Suchi. Yeah. I know you said Bronny is his own man, obviously, but I'm just curious, you know, with everything being open now, all his options open, with y'all's relationship with, with Penny Hardaway, would that make University of Memphis a factor again? And, if so, um, what's that look like? Y'all's relationship with Penny? Um, I think you answered your own question to begin. Bronny's his own man. He's going to make his own decision. And uh, as a family, we're going to just support whatever decision he decides to make. It doesn't matter which, which way he goes. So uh, we look forward to, to, to his journey and uh, and whatever he decides to do with it. And we're going to be here in full support. Appreciate it. Thanks, oh, oh, yeah, we got like two questions. Let's go. <laughs> do you want to start with Fox? Sure. Uh, do you have to deal with a little bit of foul trouble in that game? adjust how you're playing defensively when you do start getting into, into some foul issues? Uh, obviously, I didn't do a very good job of it tonight. Um, I think they it took away one of my only career chase down blocks. I uh, thought it was you know pretty clean, but you know that stuff happens. Uh, but I just got to do a better job not fouling. And uh, like I said, I didn't do a good job of that tonight. Yeah, last game uh, over here, and today I've seen a lot of number 15 on the stand. That is a, you know, this is kind of home for you, you know, you know could it take a two yeah. hours away? it's like an hour 45, two hour drive. Um, I mean, I would, I would assume every time I play here, um, I know probably over 100 people that would come. Uh, you know, a lot of people from home, a lot of people from Jonesboro, which is only like an hour. Um, you know, I got a lot today as I was uh, walking off after my shooting time about like watching me in high school and stuff like that. So uh, it's just it's really cool to, you know, uh, get here and, you know, see those jerseys and, and you know, hear little kids screaming uh, my name. Um, it just means a lot to me. Sorry if this has been asked already, but at this time of the year, you know, it seems like young teams like this and experienced teams like this can give teams trouble. I mean, we just saw, also saw tonight with uh, San Antonio in Denver. Um, what goes into that dynamic? I guess how aware have you got or you guys of that dynamic, like entering the matchup and guess what kind of plays into it? Ah, you're very aware of it. Um, you know, uh, a lot of us have been around Pip a lot. Um, you know, him being with the G League and. You know, see how talented he is. But they they got a lot of talent over there with those young guys. Uh, Jake Laravia was you know really good in the first half. You know, making shots. You know, getting to the free throw line, 11-11 from the free throw line, and then obviously Gigi, uh, kind of just doing what he's shown he does all year. And then the other guys around that, kind of just filling um you know those gaps and, and playing super hard. You know, they're they're really well coached, and you could tell just with the way that they were carrying themselves early in the game that they believed that they were you know should be in the game and um you know you tip your hat you know when um you know you see guys like that um you know really going and taking control of a game uh you know they're gonna you know memphis is gonna be in a really good spot next year when they get all their guys back with that you know young talent that they have as well austin you of course know how this team competes so whether it was the players out there today or last year do you feel like that can just, not that you need it, but give you any kind of additional boost going into New Orleans, gonna, basically a playoff game, you're going to have to play at a certain level of intensity right from the opening tip? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, we got to go in there and play, you know, as hard as, you know, we possibly can. Obviously play smart as well, but, you know, when we do that and we, you know, are clicking on both ends of the floor, uh, you know, we feel like we're a tough team to beat, um, but, you know, 
Sunday will be a really good test for the start of, you know, basically, like you said, the playoffs and, um, you know, just, you know, getting into that mindset, getting into that, you know, competitive spirit of uh, this is that time of the year. Um, it's a beautiful time of year. It's the, you know, the best basketball, in my opinion, just because everybody's so locked in and uh, competing for one common goal. And, once we do that as you know a collective group and play the right basketball, you know we feel like uh, we got a really good opportunity. Last question. You kind of mentioned it earlier, but playing against a team like this, guys on ten days, two ways, stuff like that. Is it as the game goes on? Is it kind of while well, these guys are still in it? Is that surprising, or is it kind of like we got to these guys are going to play hard and we got to just push till the till the end? Really, just got to play the game. Uh, you don't really <clears throat> you don't really sit there and think that. It's not possible for them to be in the game. Uh, like I said, we knew going into the game the talent that they have over there with the young guys, uh, and you know just the you know, their their culture around here. They play super hard. They compete every possession, and like I said, they're really well coached. And um, we knew going into the game that that their coaches would have them ready for. You know, whatever we were coming to do, that they were gonna, like I said, play super hard. Um, and what you know they did the night, I don't think it really surprised anybody. Uh, they're you know really good basketball players. And like I said, especially those three um, that I named earlier, really, really, really good basketball players. Thank you, Darvin. Le LeBron said in the walk-off that you know no matter what happens in the game, that you won the game. Like that, that is the main thing. That's the thing. Uh, you know, with that said, how are you trying to manage things, the minutes, keeping AD out there, keeping LeBron out there, the Memphis charging back, uh, just a lot going on, not thinking about the next game. What was your mindset as you uh, went through, especially that fourth quarter? Well, just trying to uh, maintain some continuity. Um, and, you know, we're, getting, we're at that point in the season where you're going to have to uh, push your guys. They're going to have to push through some quarter to quarter. So. Trying to maintain that continuity, um, get you know a tight grip back on the on the game, uh, and, and you got to have your best finishers and your best players out there. So, no disrespect to anyone on our roster, we have a really deep roster, but you know the, the rotation goes out the window when you a much needed victory like the one we just played, just attained, I should say. Um, but all in all, you know some things definitely we definitely we got to clean up, but we needed to win this game and we won it. You knew Memphis was going to play hard. They've been doing that all year. A lot of young guys excited to play. Darvin, what, what were the areas, though, where you need to sharpen up and you need to kind of get back to playing that type of basketball you referenced pregame where you had won 9 and 10? Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to Taylor Jenkins, his staff. They, they, they're coaching their asses off. And, you know, under some tough circumstances with their injury, um, their injury situation, uh, those, those, that young team, uh, they, they knocked off a really good Bucks team not too long ago. Um, and, and you're in for a fight, no matter who's wearing that Grizzly uniform. And that's a testament to him and his crew um, pushing the line, not letting them give up. Uh, that said, the three areas tonight that reared their heads for us in a negative way were, you know, giving up second and third chance opportunities, not defensive rebounding at a high level, uh, had some bad fouls, uh, really, you know, not being disciplined, staying down on the pump fake, showing our hands, being in the area, getting there, doing our work early. And then lastly, our ball security, our ball, you know, they had 26 points off our 19 turnovers. Um, they had 10 turnovers at halftime. That gave them 12 points. And they had 20, uh, 20 points off second chance opportunities. So definitely not fouling, not putting teams in the bonus frequently holding teams to one possession and taking care of the ball, three things we're going to have to do. We, we expect to make a strong push through the postseason. Darwin, obviously you guys accomplished the win, which was the main uh, objective for the night. And um, LeBron saved his best for last with that final flourish in the 41st minute. But it, it was there um, a consideration throughout the course of the game as you saw their minutes climb into the 40s of, you know, how, how could this affect us? Um, you know, we have an early game on Sunday and – you know, do we, are we using up some of the stuff tonight that, that could hurt us down the line? No, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, we, we, you know, we all had some great one-on-ones before we left L.A. with some of our top guys in the rotation. And uh, we all understand what's at stake. Um, we have to push it, and, and we can't worry about what's going on. Now we can, because the night is over with. We've secured the W. 
Uh, but in the moment, you know, you're not worried about that. You're worrying about securing the victory that you came to get. And so uh, there's things we can do tomorrow that will help them fill their cups back up. But uh, everyone knows what time it is. It's that time of the year, man. We got we, 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 Whatever we need and however long we need to push guys, it, it's just got to happen. And they, they all understand that. And again, we're smart and efficient with what we do on a non-game day and what we do sometimes, you know, the film is the biggest uh, nugget that, that we, we explore um, on a non-game day. So we're, we're equipped to, to pivot that we're in the right direction based on a long, you know, those guys carrying a, a long, heavy load tonight. Especially at this time of year, there are more examples of, you know, maybe teams toward the bottom of the standing really giving playoff teams or teams with postseason aspirations a push. Uh, tap into with Denver tonight with the Spurs. Um, what do you think kind of leads to that? Is it the lack of film maybe that you guys don't have on, you know, Grizzlies team that's missing 13 guys? What, what kind of leads to that kind of dynamic this, at this point? I mean, it's a mixture of a lot of stuff. You know, guys not being familiar um, with, with, with certain guys that may come out of the G League system that, that get to the parent club and fill some holes for that club. It's uh, guys, you know, that, that can show, that's shown, trying to show that they can play and they belong at this level. Um, we know we know how talented uh, Scotty Pippen Jr. is. He's been in our system. Uh, G.G. Jackson was a kid that a tremendous talented kid uh, that we had in a, a pre-draft workout. And so, did some of these guys, Lavaria. I mean, these, we've seen what he's what he's done specifically against the Cleveland Cavaliers here recently. Uh, I said his name wrong too. It's Laravia. Um, I said, I think I said Lavaria, whatever. Um, kids can play his ass off. Um, but it's a combination of that, and these guys know that their season is about to be over. Um, and, and so they're, 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 they're trying to leave that, that good, long lasting, and last impression on, on their season and, and, and what type of players they are. So, and again, Taylor has the type of program where the, he's, you know, the only mistake you can make over there is to be non competitive and, and, and not work hard. Darvin, it's been three straight games for D'Lo under shooting under 30%. What, what have you seen from him over that stretch, and what can you guys do to kind of get him back on track offensively? Just encourage him to stay aggressive. I'm not worried about his confidence. He's a guy that constantly goes back to the work floor, works on his game, um, and I expect him to do the same. But just encourage him to stay assertive, stay deliberate, stay aggressive. And, and understanding that you just said you're not worried about his confidence, um, he didn't look as aggressive tonight as, as he has. You know, maybe that's – the shooting and, and the slump or whatever but especially at this time of year when the stakes are so high at, in each game like how difficult is that for a player to shoot their way through a slump kind of knowing that the next loss like could potentially be like you know the critical one that 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 moves you in the standings or like i guess the stakes being as high as they are ah man you know you, you just have to again rally around them show the confidence in them and encourage them to do what he's been doing um one thing about him, he has a strong work ethic. He goes back to the drawing board, and even when he was shooting lights out, he stayed on the practice floor working on his game. And again, I love that. I applaud that. Um, and then other we're finding other ways to help us, uh, whether it's play calling for Bron, AD, AR, whoever, Rui, um, you know, setting screens. Uh, had a big block down the stretch. Uh, tonight, and so uh, just figuring out different ways to help the team, but I'm not worried about his confidence. He'll shoot his way out of it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.